Welcome to the Whiskey Bowl. I'm Dan. I'm Rex. This is freaking Glenfiddich. Glenfiddich. I looked 18. down. I looked down. I was like, no, yeah. certainly not the Glenfiddich. We haven't done this one. Okay. And this is from yeah. Zach Krieger. Zach Krieger, you magnificent bastard. Fight. So, uh, how have we not done Glenfiddich 18? I don't know. I really don't know. We've done several other right. Glenfiddichs. Okay. But not the 18. But not the 18. Not the 18. Okay. This is Oloroso and so, Bourbon. Foreshadowing. You know we're going to compare. This is. They're all downstairs. You got this. I believe in your skills to go downstairs. I'm going to go from memory. And pick a bottle up. I got and this. And walk back up the stairs. I got this surely from memory. I could give you a check. I'm having a truly magical experience over here. I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm comparing all kinds of things. Oh, that's lovely. So Glenfiddich, right out of the gate, right? Glenfiddich is one of the, the lighter, sweeter, um, but still not too boring and overly right. friendly. Still right? complex enough. Like it's got the nice malt mustiness right. to it. It's got a little bit of the peppery notes. It's not trying too hard to be your friend that it becomes annoying. Yes. It's like, yes. oh, just beautiful and lovely and just sweet. Enjoyable. And and just and enjoyable. And easy to find. Pretty typical yeah. at most bars yeah. that have a reasonable whiskey selection. So, and this is also very, I'm not sure about the 18 yet. I haven't, I haven't tested it, uh, tasted it, but Glenfiddich in general. Usually very high on the list for people to get into scotches. Yes, the absolutely. Gateway, if they don't want something smoky, yeah, Glenfiddich's way up there. They're yeah, they're just a kick-ass whiskey. That's William Grant and Sons, mm -hmm. uh, great company owns uh, this Glenfiddich. One of my favorite Glenfiddich oh, things. It's like a fruity vanilla. Oh, it really is. Yeah, right. It's beautiful. So dark fruit, mm -hmm. but not so dark that it reaches the point of being overly ripe. Yeah, right. That's a honey. Yes. This and is cream. a this is a and the cream and uh, this is a forty three percent. That's a whiskey that is punching above its proof. It's proof class. Yeah, it's proof class. It's it's bringing some flavors in here that a lot of other whiskeys at forty three percent they don't have that much character richness in the flavors. And it still maintains that nice little bit of pepper. It's a little more mild than I'd prefer, but it still maintains that nice little peppery hint at the well, end. And to my point though. To be high on a lot of people's list for a gateway getting into Absolutely. scotch kind of whiskey. You this, don't want it too high of a proof. This is probably even more so than the 12. Yeah. Uh, because 12 has a little more pepper and is really vanilla. Whereas this is kind of fruit you know what I like? and pepper. I liked how beautiful you just segue into the, the comparison we're going to do right now. Right now. I thought you had much magical powers where you could call... Right now. Where you could call any whiskey from the vault from sheer willpower to your current location. You and I both know. <laughs> I could walk downstairs yeah. and I could pick up the bottle. Yeah. That's not where the true test of moochiness is. <laughs> the no, true no, test mean, is, is to get you <laughs> to go down <laughs> and get the whiskey the people want to compare. Can you hear their screams? They're crying out. I think it's the elevator, actually. Yeah, it's the, the elevator. elevator. The elevator, so, elevator noise. Well, that's a that's an often made mistake. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like fine. the screams of a million magnificent bastards oh, no, begging just, yeah. for a Glenfiddich comparison. That's just the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know the cool thing about Glenfiddich is in Prohibition, right? Everyone's in crisis mode. Half, well, half their market. Yeah. Did you catch those? Yes. Wow. Half their market. Ninja. <laughs> Uh, it's just vanished overnight, legally, right? Okay. Prohibition. Yeah. Like all oh, the yeah, Scotch yeah. stores. Right? All right. Yeah. So Glenfiddich doubles down on production. Okay. Actually increases production during Prohibition. Really? So when Prohibition ended, Glenfiddich was like, "We got this. <laughs> <laughs> you guys need some uh, aged, finer Scotch? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got it. We got that handled for you. <laughs> uh, so here's here's the thing." The last episode, mm -hmm. I think it's the one before this, one or two before this. Do you know how long your runtime was? Yeah, I do. I don't want to say it out loud because it's embarrassing. You know why? Because of all of our rants that we couldn't keep in the video. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we didn't have a comparison whiskey. We have another whiskey. So it's just it's just a, it's another gift whiskey. 
but it's, but it's one no one's going to be able to get, which is why I partnered it with uh, Glenn so Fittick. Everybody two, can get two comparisons. I think is apt. <laughs> Apropos. Well, look at that. <laughs> That's some dangly bits right there. This is a family it's channel. Got a little bit of a this problem though. It's a family channel. <laughs> hey, it's fine. It happens all the time. It's normal. So this one. People who are in that mindset of wanting, like they've already gone through the gateway stuff. They're serious and excited about trying new funky, crazy flavor adventures. Maybe they're really deep into Isla. They want the yeah. challenging, smoky stuff. This is not their one. If that's their part of the journey that they're currently on, this is probably going to be a little boring to them. Mm -hmm. But as we've often said, people that go through that part of the journey, they very often circle back to I did. the lighter, more nuanced stuff, and they're able to find things. After finding stuff in really challenging, smoky walls of aggressive flavors, they're better equipped to find stuff in sweeter, lighter, delicate things. So, smell that. Oh, okay. It's like a cream soda type of deal. Yeah. But with a little bit of that musty, young, babyish note. Babyish? Like throw up. No. Yeah, like, like. I think you smelled a lot more baby throw up than I have. That, which that means is I did my share of taking care of the children. Moral support. Ah! <laughs> I don't think you can discount moral support. <laughs> it's really critical to the whole... If I'm not mistaken, so this is Santa Cruz, California. Yeah. This guy had a long history in uh, breweries and has started his own distillery, Sean Venus. Okay. And uh, I think if, this, if it's still the same thing, it's uh, double distilled in an Alembic still. In ten and then Asian ten gallon barrels. See, I'm getting like more of a like a multi cream soda type of vibe on the nose. I'm not getting any baby sick in there. It does smell young. Hmm. Oh, it's not bad on the taste though. Yeah. Um, oh. This is one that I would say it's like a oh. If I would, a few different things going on. Yeah, if I had the option to like, do you want to buy that? I'd be like, well, I don't know. But if I said, do you like it? I yeah. would say I'm. I'm pleasantly surprised based on the expectations I had for being such a young whiskey. Okay. Uh, and the taste is better than the nose. Yes, I totally agree with that. More interesting, complex. So let's talk about the taste. The thing that surprised me is I actually had a little bit of a wood spice note show up about three quarters of the way through. You get, oh yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. Damn. This is far more subtle than I would have ever imagined for being under a year old. Well, subtle, and there's a few different interesting things. It's like a little bit of a charred wood with that... Uh, oh, you know why? Because it's not. Okay. So, the original stuff yeah. uh, was young that I was researching, but oh. this specific one is three years old. Oh, fair enough. That, that makes ex sense. That makes I'm like, that this is punching sense. so far above right. a young whiskey. Sure. I have no explanation for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's nice. Um, so the charred oak layer is what's most interesting to me. The sweetness in there is kind of like a creamy maltiness, and uh, like a sugar, a sugared element added in there. I don't know if I can attribute that to like a floral sweetness or fruity sweetness as much as I can just a sugar. You know what this reminds me of? Mm, a creamed sugar. It reminds me of oak. if an Irish whiskey added New American oak char spice to itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's got that buttery, round Irish yeah. note. Yeah. But then it also has this barrel spice that's just... It's that sweet and cream. And you know you know what's... I keep getting drawn into this wood smoky char element. It's that wood burning kit, man. Damn, if this isn't growing on me. Though, yeah, every time you go back, it's like a little bit more. You find a new thing. The wood burning kit that you could play with when you were a kid. Yeah. Right? It's a yeah, really, yeah, yeah. I have one. I have one in the office. Downstairs. Okay. But that uh, smell of like the burnt mm -hmm. wood, that's in the taste. Man, yeah. I should have reserved final judgment or real opinions on this thing until sitting with it because this is good. That's lovely. Uh, it's think... not It's not going to change your world, but I think shit, I could order that. I just... Punch, punch I'm at a loss for words. Yeah, I think punching above expectations. Yeah, know, it's, the way that you're expecting. And it's, yes. it's from a beer guy. Well, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I came out of beer, wanted right. to do whiskey. Damn. A, an example of a beer guy that can make a mean whiskey. Yes, I agree with that. Fair enough. You got a couple of comments if you want to give it a shot. Don't rush me. The video's we already short change. The we short change the ten people. minutes long. We short changed them with the episode. We did because we ranted on things that you know that had to be cut out that weren't relevant. We, to we don't normally cut things out of that episode, so this was one maybe the first time in over a year right. that I saw Chad's message go. 
So well, there was a <laughs> there was like a there was like four minutes apparently where I said, "All right, Chad, this is just like talking about other." And things. then we kept going, and then we kept talking about yeah. that, and then we came and we attributed that time towards the video mm -hmm. where we were not talking about whiskey stuff at all. Yeah, definitely our fault. Uh, okay, Pat McDermott, that's not a flask. That's a whiskey dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one I thought that could be a great name for that. <laughs> Evans Golf, Goff. Uh, I can't believe I actually fell for the baby gag at the start. <laughs> I was actually wondering how many people were like, Oh, that excites! He had a baby! It's a very square looking baby. Yeah, oh, oh! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> uh, okay, I think Glenn Fittick, you know what? It met expectations, yep. and then the wayward whisk, wayward whiskey. It surpassed expectations. Absolutely. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.